who of you want to do things right? To keep up with keeping your lives tight. Tight as in being right with the truth of true insight. Who of you want to do things right? Who of you want to truly succeed in attaining all and that which is your need? To be heard by the real answerer of all deeds, the true hero of all whom pleads. Who of you really want to bow down to the true king of kings commanding the crown? To worship the one that ever rules alone, commanding everything of creation from the seat of its throne. too many people who set themselves up as equals with our user. One of the great faults of man is that man thinks that he knows and truly believe that he knows. Even some of the great pretenders of the faith began to believe what they pretend. Hmm? When, when Allah speaks about the Almighty Throne, it's sitting on the Almighty Throne. How many Muslims in the world, how many Christians and Jews have narrowed that throne down to a very small size? First of all, if you ever Go to the throne of our ease, O Lord. Even that which it manifests before the angels is gigantic. I'll give you a picture of what I seen one of the numerous times that I've been there. Standing before the foot of the throne looking up at the foot in the foot itself just imagine a mountain not the Empire State Building but a mountain imagine 6,000, 7,000 feet in the air can you imagine that? And Aiza says to me, I am greater than this. This is nothing. Hmm? Even though it gives us forms and figures to look at, to identify with, and this being was in the image of a man, in our form, in that image which Jesus said it created us in. Even in that form, it is too great for us. But it is too great for that form. How many? Because I've had many Muslims tell me, oh, the law is seated on the throne. The law never leave that throne. And they have created a picture they have created a situation where Aiza Allah is locked down on the throne, not realizing that the seat of the throne is the whole creation itself. And that Aiza Allah is greater than creation if it had a side. But it's very important that we recognize the community of ourselves during this Ramadan. When we go and now we make our calls to prayer, stop looking at the people. Look at yourself. Look at the people inside of yourself. Understand what an individual is person inwardly divided 
into many parts. Recognize when Allah says, make that call of prayer, that Allah is saying, make that call of prayer to you, to you and your own community of self. And when you make your select, don't be so silent with it if you're alone. Let yourself hear it. You make that call and the brothers and sisters be making the call and they say it out, that's for themselves to hear it. Hmm? The goal of, our, of Muslims, the goal of true believers is to reach Allah, to reach the free dome, the free realm of our ease of Allah. To be not a slave to any man, woman, or child, or other thing. Not even to the angels. Just to our ease of Allah. And remember that men, the jinn, those who are in powerful position, who set up religions and, and bend the truth and make new forms of religion and then put it down on people, throw it down on their, their figureheads, their politicians and their bankers and what have you, and say, get this to the people and make them follow this. Remember that they're slaves of Allah as well. And you're not to be a slave unto them. And if you work for one of them, you got a job, never look at yourself in that slave position as a slave to anything but Allah. See, that's the beauty, again, of Ramadan. If you truly believe and you open up that Holy Quran, or if you open up any book, because the Holy Quran is not the only book for you to open up. One of the first things Allah revealed to me is that it said the Holy Quran is the criterion of all that came before it and all that was to come after it. And if you understand what criterion means, then you understand the basis of the Holy Quran to some degree. You understand how it's a key to all that came before it and all that was to come after it. And if you can click on to it saying that which is to come behind it and not follow the billions of Muslims that have gone to hell to say that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet of Allah. In other words, <laughs> shut the hell up, Allah. We don't want to hear from you no more. And Muhammad, and Allah itself, told Muhammad, they tried that with Joseph. They're going to try it with you. They say that you the last. If you open yourself up during Ramadan, seeking that fast, that purification, in every phase of your being, stay away from that which you know is not right. And don't tell me, don't give me no excuses about, well, I've been in this situation and I've been doing it all the time, so, you know, what the hell? Allah knows my heart. Yeah, Allah knows everybody's heart. That's, a, that's, a, that's one of the phoniest sayings. There are so many people. Allah knows my heart. What the hell are you telling me Allah knows your heart for? <laughs> Allah knows my heart too. There's not a heart in creation that Allah don't know. So who are you trying to convince? That you righteous. Or that Allah has excused you. But if you find yourself being right with Allah, Allah will open these things up to you and let you know that Prophet Muhammad, when he talked about the great day, over and over and over and over again, those who believe in the great day, 
the day of judgment he was talking about today. He was talking about what prophecy Jesus was given. He wasn't talking about in, in heaven like the Muslims try to make you think. Oh, he was talking about the day of the young. Uh, you go on to heaven and whatever. Huh? He was talking about those who believe in Allah is coming down to earth again this day, in this time, for those people whom Allah said, if your people do like the people of the book before you, I will create a new people. And Allah knew already that it was going to create us in this day and time. Why do you think all the Muslims in the East is bringing their lying behinds over here in the West? Why do you think the great interest was over here? Why do you think the great interest was in the New York, New Jersey area? Why do you think the Jews is taking over Newark? Why do you think they trying to hush hush Nostradamus and act as though he never spoke about a black man. He spoke about every man on the face of the planet except the black people. They are very studious. As you study and pray and worship in Ramadan, they study and pray and worship the devil and trying to turn you away. The devil is real. You need to believe that and understand that. It is real in your life. And don't be like the fools. Always want to act like the devil is with somebody else. You know that devil, man? Yeah, the devil, devil, devil. Yeah, right. Around the corner? Around the corner of your own head. <laughs> That's where the devil at. Around the corner of your own head. Mm -hmm. The great achievement in life is what? Coming into the realization of Allah. Coming into the unity of Allah. To receive that which all the prophets have brought as an example to human humanity. Allah through them, making them our examples, made it as such that we as human beings, as minds, know that we can reach it in some form or fashion. That we can relate to it, that it will relate to us. Huh? Just think about this here. You have people always talking about call upon Allah, call upon Allah, call Allah, call Allah, call Allah, call Allah right? You go to some of them saying, people say, you know what, Allah has talked to me. Ah, oh, stop for Allah. Oh, this brother bugged out. That's the first thing I got when Allah came to me in 79. Stop for Allah, this brother gone now. You can't be talking like that, brother. They're going to kill you. I said, well, if they going to kill me. Aiza, or I said back then, Allah, before it gave me its new name, Allah means for it to kill me, for them to kill me. And there's nothing I could do about it. But know this. If that wall is red, you can't convince me it's blue. Allah is real. And if what got me is not Allah, then I'm condemned, I'm cursed to hell because I can't beat it. I can't get over it. I can't get under it. I can't get around it. I can't get away from it. And it has proven to me that it is a law. Or some great angel of a law that <clears throat> taking a law's name. <laughs> But that's not the case. So we go about spending our time in the Ramadans trying to get as near to law as possible. We who believe. And then we extend that beyond 
Ramadan because we know the favor of Allah and try to live the whole year as though we're in Ramadan. Trying to set aside our evils. Trying to set aside, trying to fast. Trying not to be, of, you know, those who are greedy, who love eating so much. Sleeping so much. Lying. Begging. Deceiving. This man makes a business out of that out of that stuff. Huh? I remember a time when it became harder for me to do evil than it was for me to do good. Man, that was surprising. <laughs> it was surprising. It really was. And I was talking to myself about it. I said it. Self, <laughs> you check this out. I, I want to lie there, but damn, it was hard. I couldn't lie. It feels so good doing right. Self, what, what's going on? Huh? He would say, that brother gone, man. He talking to himself. Talking to himself. Hmm? <laughs> You tell me one human being on the face of the planet Earth don't talk to themselves. Uh, stump your toe, you say, damn! Who was you talking to? Huh? Who? You alone, you to stump your toe and you to scream down. Who were you talking to? Unless you, unless you really, really, truly Believe in Allah, and you know that Allah is the force of all things, and you know, okay, I said damn, but I ain't mean damn, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so many of us take for granted that Allah is here. Aiz Allah is the most greatest thing being ignored by man. The greatest servant is Allah. Greater than any servant you could ever imagine. Because every servant in life is served by Allah. Hmm? I'm served to you. How long have people been feasting on me? Hmm? I remember when Allah took me into the book of Malachi and he said, they will cut you. And I was thinking, the enemies of Allah, yeah, those, those damn devils, those jinn, those people, oh man, they just cut, gonna cut me. I said, yeah. He said, but we talking about the spiritual family. Those who are closest to you. Who's been hurting you all these years? I've never let anybody else close to you. Who's been using you as the prayer carpet? The crying shoulder? Huh? The whipping boy. I've taught people how to deal with other people. And these same people have come back and used on me what I've taught them for a defense <laughs> in their life. And I said, why the hell are you doing that to me? Well, this is what you taught me. That's like I told my son, don't you ever let anybody hit you without you hitting them back. <laughs> <laughs> you defend yourself. And I remember I spanked him and he turned around and he hit me back. I think my child was about nine or ten. I said, boy, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you told me don't let nobody hit me. I said, not me, me, son. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Don't be, you don't be hitting me. He said, well, huh? I said, don't you hit, don't you ever. I said, I said, I you I said, cause there gonna come a time when I'm gonna be old and maybe walking with a cane. Don't you hit me. I might hit you with that cane, but don't you hit me. He said, Dad, but you but nothing, because I'll shoot you if you hit me. <laughs> 
So I got some very big, strong sons that respect me, and they will not hit me for anything. And I know because I still hit them. I have to test it, you know. <laughs> got some of you guys in here calling me dad. And soon enough. <laughs> But no, on the real side, you know, we have people ignoring the law and ignoring the fact that it has made itself known as being at all places at all times. If you hear all things, you got to be there. I got a, I had a Muslim tell me, science have proven that two things cannot exist in the same space at the same time. So you shout out, brother, about a law being at all places at all time. You try to tell me a law is in that car? I said, yes. So a law is in the fabric of that car. Brother, you shot out. I said, brother, if a law wasn't in the fabric of that car, that car wouldn't be in existence. A law is the essence of reality. A law is the essence of life, the matter of life, the being of life. We are all of a law. Without it, we couldn't be. Where you think your mind comes from? It's crooked and <laughs> messed up as it is. Huh? Allah is the power, and it's a very powerful thing to have. Huh? I used to laugh at brothers in the hood. Gangs coming at me. Who you, who you follow? I heard you say you think you this, that, and the other. When Allah give you real realization of itself, things become real funny. Life becomes real funny. Yeah. See, you're going through all kinds of changes and what have you, all kinds of problems, all kinds of questions. I have peace, man. Y'all see me. I work my tail off. I'm here tired as I could be right now from working, doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. Huh? My wives, my children trying to, Daddy, can I help you get up there? <coughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. And they scatter behind me. Hope it don't fall. Hope it don't fall. And I'm picking up the hammer, and it's feeling like it's about five pounds, you know? Then the Lord give me the energy and the strength to do what I got to do. Huh? And I look at myself and I laugh. I told my family this morning, I said, man, I'm so tired of my son. They said, why? I said, look how slow I'm moving. All this stuff here I used to do in no time, look at me. Taking me five minutes to get here from the kitchen to the dog on porch. Nah, that's me. And I laugh. If I can't laugh at myself, then what can I laugh at? Because, see, no matter what our ease of Allah do to me, it has already told me that I am a sign for the people. I'm all broken down, like, damn. Sign for these fools again. They get on my nerves. They won't listen to you, but you keep making me a sign for them. Now, medical doctors say you are not supposed to do this, that, this, that, but look what you're doing. Okay, who I'm going to tell? Everybody I tell them, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Brother, thank you, something. Sick ass nigga is gone. Huh? But where's the sign of Allah? See, Allah got signs in all things. <coughs> There's signs in you that I see of Allah. Hmm? It took me a, a while to understand Muhammad. When the brother said to Muhammad, Muhammad said, There's a devil in all people. And the brother got smart with him, you know, sassy or whatever. Yeah, well, you said a. Devil on people, and then there's a devil in you. Prophet Muhammad said, Yeah. 
<laughs> but my devil serves Allah. And I, I was like, wow, that sounds cool. My devil serves Allah. I make my devil serve Allah. How can I make my devil serve Allah? I understood after Allah unified itself with me. And it took my devil out, did some things to it before it brought it back. How can you say, rehabilitated? <laughs> You know, and I understand you need both sides. You can't have one without the other. All these self-righteous people run around here thinking they ain't got no association with the devil. <laughs> huh? Oh, no, man, I ain't, I ain't about the devil. Huh. Kick them shoes off, feet stinking. Oh, what's that smell? <laughs> That's the devil, man. <laughs> Huh? See, the devil is nothing but the negative. That which is imperfect. That which is that which is faulty. That which is negative. That which brings about a negative response. Aiza Allah is in control of everything. The devil too. The devil exists in ways that you have no knowledge. And in ways that you have knowledge. I had someone tell me, brother, you know, you need to stop saying that Allah has secrets. Because I used to say the secrets of Allah. I said, okay. Allah don't have no secrets. All right, you know everything. Huh? See, we, we take the simplest things and we make it difficult. That's why I tell people, worshiping Allah... Serving Allah, being right, is simple. But it can be the most difficult thing there is for you to do. It all depends on you as an individual. If you surrender to Allah and follow what it's commanded you to do, then it will show you its promise. How you going to know its promise and how you going to know about its secrets, that which it keeps secreted, if you don't follow what it say on the path of the way. Hmm? I've literally had people say to me, why do I have to listen to you and be with you in order to be pleasing to Allah? So, hey man, I ain't saying that. All I'm saying is that I'm the messenger prophet of Allah and to turn away from me, you turn away from Allah's most recent message in his most recent messenger you turn it away so you turn away from Allah's presence to go where to find Allah hmm but I understand the weakness of man I understand that because I'm a man and I remember the time when I you know Turn to Allah and say, oh, Allah, i got to pray. Allah said, why are you performing that? Why are you doing that when you're already here? Why are you acting like you're trying to get to me when you're already here with me? Now, for people to hear me say that, who think they holier than thou, think they the righteous Muslims, think they have, are rightly guided, stop for Allah. <laughs> you hear that brother talking like he know Allah. If a law is not to be known, why do we talk about itself? Huh? If its book is not to be understood as a thing for here and now, today, why did it send it down to Muhammad? Why in the book did it say about a book to come or, or one to come, something to come in the great day? And if that's not true, why is it that the Arab translators have fought so hard to change and to hide what's written in Arabic? 
to the various people of the world who speak different languages. If it was no here, no now, if Allah wasn't El Noon, the one to be known, the one to be recognized, the one to be prayed to, the one to be worshipped, then why would they try to take that out of the book? Now, he's this peace and blessed be with about your presence. I have to go. My time is limited with you all, but I'm going to continue this conversation with my people. Have a good day. Who of you want to do things right? To keep up with keeping your lives tight. Tight as in being right with the truth of true insight. Who of you want to do things right? Who of you?